Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Two more attorneys turned down Trump. A pair of veteran white-collar lawyers have turned down President Donald Trump's offer to help lead his defense in the Russia probe, marking another setback for a legal team that's seen its numbers dwindle over the past week while it prepares for a potentially critical interview between the president and special counsel Robert Mueller. The law firm Winston & Strawn said Monday night that two of its partners, former federal prosecutors Tom Buchanan and Dan Webb, were approached by Trump but declined the job due to business conflicts. However, they consider the opportunity to represent the president to be the highest honor, and they sincerely regret that they cannot do so, the law firm said. They wish the president the best and believe he has excellent representation in Ty Cobb and Giseclo. Trump's legal team is now led by Cobb, who is handling official White House matters in response to Mueller's investigation, and Sekolo a conservative attorney and talk radio host who has been the public face of the president's outside legal team. Sekolo declined comment when asked Monday night about the president's attempt to hire Buchanan, a former assistant U.S. attorney in Virginia, and Webb, a former reagan era U.S. attorney from Chicago. Webb led the prosecution of Admiral John Poindexter during the Iran-Contra affair and later, as an independent counsel in 1989, cleared a George H.W. Bush White House aide of allegations he broke federal ethics laws in failing to repay a $5,000 personal loan. We are proceeding with our ongoing cooperation with the Office of Special Counsel, Sekulow said. Trump's legal team has had a rough week. Last week, it lost John Dowd, the president's longtime lead personal attorney, who resigned after the president tried to hire Joseph D. Geneva and his wife, Victoria Tonesing. D. Geneva and Tonsing had their own problems, and on Sunday, Sekulo cited conflicts of interest as the reason they were not joining the president's team. The couple are law partners and were already representing two other people in the Russia case, former Trump legal team spokesman Mark Corallo and Sam Clovis, a Trump campaign policy advisor. But a senior administration official told Politico that Trump's attorneys had pleaded with the president against hiring the couple not just because of the conflicts of interest. There was also concern about their ages, he's 73, she's 76, and their penchant for extolling unfounded theories, and the president was turned off because they looked disheveled when they came to meet with him last week. D. Geneva is a former federal prosecutor who served as an independent counsel to investigate whether aides to President George H. W. Bush violated federal law by searching Bill Clinton's passport files during the 1992 presidential campaign. Trump has been getting informal legal advice from his longtime personal attorney Mark K. Sowitz, a New York-based attorney who originally led the president's Russia response but stepped down last summer. Officially. The legal team also includes about five White House aides who are helping Cobb and four attorneys with ties to Sekulow's nonprofit, the American Center for Law and Justice, Emory Law School senior lecturer Mark Goldfeder, Stuart Roth, a longtime legal partner and a Mercer University Law School classmate, former federal prosecutor and Georgia State Attorney Andrew E. Kahnemu, and ACLJ senior counsel Benjamin Sisney. But Trump lacks an experienced criminal attorney on his personal team, and he's been gauging interest for weeks from other prominent lawyers. Former George W. Bush Solicitor General Ted Olson recently turned down an offer from Trump, citing conflicts with his law firm. Olson, appearing on MSNBC on Monday, declined to address the president's legal situation but said the overall high turnover of staffing at the White House was not helpful. I think everybody would agree this is turmoil. It's chaos, it's confusion, it's not good for anything, Olson said. We always believe that there should be an orderly process, and of course, government is not clean nor orderly ever. But this seems to be beyond normal. NSC spokesman Trump admitted spy attack during Putin call to not tip off expulsions.
a spokesman for the National Security Council said Tuesday that President Donald Trump did not discuss the nerve agent attack on an ex-spy in the U.K. during his call with Russian President Vladimir Putin because he didn't want to give them advance notice of his plans to expel their diplomats. The reason he didn't bring up the poisoning in the conversation with Putin is because this U.S. action was in motion at the time they had the conversation, NSC spokesman Michael Anton told CNN. As President Trump often has said, he doesn't telegraph his moves or telegraph his punches when he's about to make a move. The Trump administration announced Monday it is expelling 60 Russian diplomats over Moscow's alleged role in the attack on Sergei Skripal, a former Russian spy, in Salisbury earlier this month. The United Kingdom and the European Union unveiled their own retaliatory steps toward the Kremlin on Monday with British Prime Minister Theresa May saying more than 100 Russian intelligence officials would be expelled and European Council President Donald Tusk announcing 14 EU member states would follow suit in ejecting Russian officials. U.S. and European leaders have implicated the Russian government in the attack on Skripal, with Trump concurring with May's findings that Moscow probably directed the illegal use of a banned nerve agent in the attempted murder of the ex-spy. Despite the Trump administration's sharp actions against the Kremlin, Trump opted not to discuss the Skripal attack during a phone conversation with Putin last week. During the discussion Trump predicted the two leaders would soon meet and congratulated Putin on his recent re-election, a gesture several lawmakers condemned. And then on Tuesday also pushed back against critics who say that the president has not spoken out forcefully enough to denounce Russian attempts to influence the 2016 elections. Come on, now, they had a 45-minute, out of two-and-a-half-hour meeting in Hamburg, 45 to 50 minutes of that was spent on meddling in the elections, Anton said, citing the two leaders' face-to-face -face meeting during a G20 summit in Germany last year. The president felt that Putin said all he was going to say, denied it several times, was never going to be move off that denial. Stormy Daniels' lawsuit against Cohen doesn't pass the smell test, his attorney says. A lawyer who represents President Donald Trump's longtime personal attorney Michael Cohen said Tuesday that a defamation lawsuit brought by porn star Stormy Daniels against Cohen doesn't even pass the smell test and will be quickly dismissed. Daniels, who claims to have had a sexual encounter with Trump in 2006 and is suing to void a non-disclosure agreement related to their alleged relationship, escalated her legal battle Monday with a second lawsuit this one accusing Cohen of defamation over a February statement denying that the president had sex with Daniels. Cohen's statement, according to Daniels, illegally characterizes her as a liar and someone who should not be trusted. That case will be dismissed on motion papers. That case is going nowhere, attorney David Schwartz, a friend of Cohen's who represents him in other cases but is not handling the Daniels litigation, told CNN's New Day on Tuesday no discovery at all. On defamation, a judge will look at that statement. It doesn't even pass the smell test. It doesn't come close to defamation. The legal buffoonery from Mr. Cohen and his friend continues. They know nothing about California law, which will control this matter, Michael Avnati, Daniel's lawyer, said in a statement to Politico in response to Schwartz's comments on CNN. Has Cohen never tried a case to a jury verdict? And why does Mr. Cohen continue to hide behind his friend who is not even counsel in any of the cases in dispute? While Daniels and her attorney have waged a legal battle against Trump and Cohen, they have also pursued their case in the court of public opinion, most notably via Daniels' Sunday interview with CBS's 60 Minutes, a segment that generated the news magazine's highest ratings in years. Of Natty who has himself been very active on the TV news circuit on behalf of his client, has publicly challenged Cohen and Trump, wondering aloud why they have not been equally vociferous in defending their version of the facts. But Schwartz said Tuesday that Cohen has every intention of going public with his defense, but not until the facts are settled by a court. He will come out in a big way on this case once the facts settle out in court. He will be all over the place and he will absolutely annihilate this guy, Schwartz said.
Shulkin critic leaves White House to return to VA. Darren Selnick, a White House advisor and a top critic of Veterans Affairs Secretary David Shulkin, has left the Domestic Policy Council and will return to a post at the Virginia. Selnick announced the news on Friday in an email obtained by Politico. He will be replaced by Drew Janowski, a legislative aide to Senator John McCain, Republican Arizona. His departure was cordial, planned and has nothing to do with Shulkin, a White House official said. President Donald Trump is reported to be unhappy with Shulkin's leadership at the VA and is considering his firing. Selnick was pushed out of the agency last year after butting heads with Shulkin over privatization of veterans' health services. At the White House, he began holding policy meetings without informing the VA secretary. Shulkin later told a confidant that moving Selnick out of the VA was his biggest mistake because he did even more damage from the White House. White House spokesman Rod Shaw on Monday declined to respond to questions about Shulkin's future in the administration. Author Allen contributed to this report.